Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, this is Scott K. One of the latest and greatest phenomenon in the mechanical keyboarding hobby is the explosion of the sheer number of switches available on the market. This is a good thing since it offers so many options, but most are based on standard Cherry MX designs, and many are also recolors of the same base switch as well. Last year, Gateron aimed to change that by exploring a new territory of MX variants, and hence this new switch was born, the Gateron Cap Switch. Riding the coattails of their successful cult favorite, the Gateron Yellow Switches, they decided to go with the Yellow Switch variant with this canary yellow housing. The first thing you'll notice about the cap switch is that gigantic hole in the center of the bottom housing, which differs from the typical sealed nub you see from standard MX designs. The next thing you'll notice is the abnormally large spring, which is both longer and wider, to accommodate both the new stem and the bottom housing designs. Then things get really weird when you get to the stem. Instead of the usual pole here, you see a huge barrel with a big hole in the middle, but this makes sense when you move on to the lower housing. The lower housing is the reverse. Instead of having a barrel with a hole in the center, you have a pole there instead. So what is going on here with this crazy switch? Many people, including myself, felt like Gateron went out of their way to make a different type of switch for the sake of just being different. Frankly, the V1 of these caps were not very well received, and for good reason. There was no real benefit to this wacky design, and what resulted was a scratchy and acoustically generic switch that didn't really take off. It also came in a nice acrylic case, but even that just felt unnecessary and probably a way to charge us more money. And when you compare this to the great selection of Gateron yellow switches out there, it really didn't offer anything more but ended up just costing more than the standard Gateron yellow. Then you had the venerable Gateron ink black. Yes, these costed almost 3 times more than a stock yellow, but these had a deep thocky sound signature and smooth operation that everyone loved. And plus, they just looked awesome. And they also sound awesome. Then this happened. They made a V2. That made me think, why? The V1 was definitely not a success. Why even try to make a second version? What changes did they even make? Was it worthwhile? This is what we will find out. First, they got rid of that fancy box. There really isn't much of a point in offering this. It will sit empty anyways. Then they worked to overhaul the entire switch. When I say the entire switch, I mean like really, literally the entire switch. So let's start with the spring. The left is the V2 and right is the V1. You can tell right off the bat that the V2 spring is shorter and darker. While they also shortened the spring, they actually added an extra coil. Next is the stems. Once again, the left is the V2 and right is the V1. While the stem molds look like it might be the same, judging by the color change, it looks like the material was updated. The V2 is definitely a bolder yellow versus the paler V1. At first glance, it doesn't look like much has changed to the top housing. However, looking at the details that Gateron has provided, top of the slider rails have been updated. This was to allow for apparently a tighter tolerance and potentially an updated top out sound. Finally, the bottom housing. Similar to the top housings, Gateron has updated the mold to create a different lower channel design and also looks to be slightly deeper as well. I wonder if this has an impact on overall bottom out sound. Enough of that, what changed from V1 to V2 in real life? Let's do some sound tests for smoothness and operation. So as you can see, there was a drastic difference between the V1 and V2 in terms of scratchiness. 
Now let's compare their sounds as well as against other Gateron switches. In my opinion, the Gateron yellows are definitely higher pitched while the Cap V2 milky housing is so close to the ink black and the Cap V2 gold housing is actually deeper than the ink black. Let's do a side by side. So there you have it. Cap V2 Milky is like 5% higher pitched than the Ink Black, while the Cap V2 Gold is like 5% lower pitched than Ink Black. So Gateron did a very good job of replicating that signature Ink Black sound with these new Cap V2 switches. What you're gonna see next is pretty shocking. What I did was back-to-back -back typing test comparisons between the V3 Gold and the Ink Black. See if you can tell the difference. The audio is completely unaltered and the gain levels were increased exactly the same. Quite shocking if you ask me. Only thing that I noticed different that was that you heard a little bit more keycap with the Cap V2 versus the Ink Black but other than that, super super close here. Alright for those who care about stem wobble, here is my unscientific test as usual. Alright so the first one is the Cap V1. So this is East and West stem wobble. It's not too bad. This is actually the V2. I think in my opinion, the East and West is pretty similar. Here is the V2 Milky. There's a slightly more um, wobble here versus the gold. And then this is the Gateron Yellow Milky housing. A, a tad bit of wobble. The Gateron Yellow KS3. Similar level as Milky in my opinion. And finally, the Ink Blacks. In my opinion, uh, there's definitely a bit of East and West wobble. I think it's similar to the Gateron Yellows. Now we're going to be taking a look at the North and South. So V1's pretty good here, not too bad. This is where you see that housing uh, update. There's definitely a lot less North and South for V2 than the V1. But the Milky, there's a little bit more. But I still think the Milky V2 is actually better than the V1. There's definitely quite a bit of north and south with the yellow milky housing. Similar with the KS3 as well. There's a lot of north and south here. And the ink black, you know, a decent amount of north and south. Not as bad as the yellows, but definitely present. So back by popular demand, it's the keyboard switch performance comparison chart. As usual, this is my opinion and my opinion only, so to be taken with a grain of salt. However, I hope to provide a visual representation of where these switches land on the chart that looks at 5 different criteria. We'll be looking at stem wobble, smoothness, sound, pitch, and cost. So first up is stem wobble, from loose to tight. 
based on my unscientific switch stem wobble test, it was pretty noticeable that the cap switches had pretty tight housings. The V2 was the tightest with their revised upper housing, although the milky version did fall slightly behind the gold. The V1 was still pretty good. I think uh, by now we know that the ink switches are middle of the pack in terms of stem wobble, and the Gateron yellow switches could use an update, which they recently have. Next up is the switch smoothness. So still to this day, ink blacks are one of the smoothest switches you can buy. Sure, there are newer smoother switches out there, but ink blacks are still considered great. I would say that the Cap V2 switches are vastly improved over their V1 and can even rival the ink for on-center smoothness. However, they start to get less smooth as you go out to the corners, so I would rank them somewhere near the standard yellows overall. I think we have all heard how scratchy the V1 cap was. Next is the sound. This is essentially looking at the switch's ability to make noise. Overall, I think most of us agree that Gateron Yellow switches are somewhat on the clackier side. The V1 is definitely clackier than the V2, and the ink somewhere in the middle of the pack. The V2 and the inks are more on the quieter end, also due to the deeper nature as well. Now the pitch. I think this is one of the biggest reasons why people buy the Gateron ink switch, and you can see why. On the overall chart, you can see once again that the standard Gateron yellows are pretty clacky and higher pitched. Then it's followed by the Cap V1 in the middle. What was interesting was that the Cap V2 switches were so close to the ink blacks, with the Cap V2 milky being slightly higher pitched than the ink black and Cap V2 gold being slightly deeper than the ink black. So very interesting there. Finally, the only objective portion of this test, the price. At the time of this review, the most expensive Gateron switch of this group is the Ink Black at a whopping 75 cents a switch. The deep sound character and smooth housing warrant a premium cost to play with these guys. The funniest part of this comparison is that the Cap V1 switch, inferior in every way, costs more than the V2 at around 51 cents. The V2 Gold then comes right behind that at 48 cents a switch. I believe based on what you have seen today, the best deal of the day is actually the Gateron Cap V2 Milky Housing. They deliver ink black sound performance at the price of a standard Gateron Yellow. I think that's pretty good. Before we go to the verdict, one last thing to share is the cap switch and spring swap potential. Due to the fatter poles, many including myself thought, can you even spring swap these? And the answer is yes, with the right springs. For example, the TX springs tend to run slightly thicker and they can accommodate the cap switches no problem. One thing to keep in mind if you care about updating these in the future. So after this long and exhausting review, what is the verdict and my final thoughts? I think it's great that Gateron tried to do something different by launching the cap switches. Although their first try with the V1 was somewhat of a failure, I believe they made up their lost ground with the V2. I know that due to the poor reception of the V1s, many haven't tried the new V2, but based on what I have seen today, I feel that if you're going after that smooth deep ink black sound, but want to stay within a reasonable budget, the Cap V2 switches are definitely worth taking a look at. As usual, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe and I will have more content for you in the future. Thanks.